to you a webinar that's going to be pretty cool, uh, Crazy Talk Animator 3 webinar. We're going to be t uh, creating a kind of a little commercial uh, script thing in uh, just a minute here. Uh, but first of all, I got to introduce you to a few things here. Okay, so this webinar, first of all, is being recorded uh, for any of you who are not, uh, it's also being broadcast live on Facebook. Um, for any of you who uh, miss a couple things or you want to catch up, we'll be providing you with a video link after the fact. After the, after the webinar is complete, we'll send you a video link you can review on your own time. And like I mentioned, it's being streamed live on Facebook as well. So a lot of people watching. Uh, what we're going to be doing is uh, kind of recreating a commercial that I'll show you in just a moment here. Uh, but first of all, I wanted to introduce you to a couple things that we have going on here over at Reillusion. We have an Animation at Work contest uh, that we're having right now. And uh, we highly encourage you to you know, submit your uh, stuff for this contest. Um, I'm going to put a couple of links in the chat window. Okay, so I'm going to copy the URL for this uh, competition and put it in the chat window there so you can uh, check it out on your own time there. All right. So I'm just going to send it to all panelists, okay? And uh, yeah, this Animation at Work contest, a good contest. You can win like $2,000 and a couple of other prizes as well. We got a couple of uh, pretty cool sponsors and media partners uh, to check out. Um, and we'll introduce that to you uh, a little bit later on as well. Okay, so uh, like I mentioned, I'm going to be producing a commercial here. I'm going to be running through a little uh, a bit of a script here. And uh, we are recording this. And we, are, we, are, we will have a Q&A session at the end of this webinar as well. So if you have any questions, uh, any uh, stuff that you want me to explain a little bit more, um, feel free to put that in the Q&A uh, section. There's a Q&A uh, panel there. And uh, feel free to put those uh, questions in that panel there or in that little section. And I'll answer those at the end of the webinar, last uh, 10, 15 minutes or so. All right, um, I don't think we have much else to introduce here. Uh, I'll also provide a, uh, we have a couple of other parts of this uh, webinar series that we're gonna be uh, uh, presenting to you. Uh, next week, we're gonna have one that's focused more on uh, character dialogue, so kind of a conversation between uh, two characters and a couple of interactional uh, animations that we're gonna be presenting. That's gonna be next week on May 29th here, you can see. And then we're gonna be doing another one in the middle of June there as well. So this one's gonna be focused more on you know, creating your own custom avatar for your own YouTube channel or whatnot. Okay, I'll put this in the uh, chat window there as well for you guys. Okay, whoops. There we go, should be, be, should be being sent to all panelists there. Okay, so that's that one. And uh, this one here is just uh, upcoming webinars. If you're interested, there's one coming up for Crazy Talk 8. If you're interested in that, I'll put that in the uh, good old chat window there as well. You can kind of review these on your own time. And finally, one more promotional page. I don't want to spend too much time on this promotional stuff because I want to get to the meat and potatoes of this presentation, which is the, uh, the animation and all the fun stuff. All right. So this is a uh, promotion that we have going on here. And I'll uh, see if I can link this to you guys at the end of the webinar. But uh, for now, we're just going to focus on, uh, excuse me, creating our own animation. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do first is give you a little bit of a preview of what we're going to be uh, creating here. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and close down uh, Chrome for now. And hopefully everyone uh, can see this uh, sad looking dude on, on the screen right now uh, with a rain cloud over top of him. Just to quickly check, uh, check the chat window here. Okay, for some reason people aren't seeing. Oh, yes, I would put the links to all attendees or all panelists, not all attendees. Okay, let me just uh, paste those in here again. There's panelists and there's attendees. And there's only a couple of panelists in this case. All right, so I'm gonna paste those in the chat window there. Okay, so those are the ones I was talking about. All right, and my uh, good assistant here has also put a couple of links in there. So you'll find what you need in, in any of one of those links, I guess. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we're going to just uh, play back this commercial. And this is what we're going to be reproducing in this webinar. Now, I'm not gonna be able to reproduce the entire commercial because it's uh, in a little bit longer than uh, 50 minutes that we have provided here. Um, but if you have any questions, you want to know about how I produced any of these little sections here, uh, feel free to put that in the question section and I'll answer those at the end of, uh, end of the webinar there as well. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, give us a- Ever feel like the world is just passing you by? Like you keep walking and walking, but your life is going nowhere? Like you're literally trying to walk forward, but the animator of your project won't allow you to change your transform position? Well, luckily, we've got just the thing for you. Introducing the Thingamabob, 
a strange looking but life saving companion that can help you move with its magical feet thingies. Now you can party like a normal human. Everyone loves a guy who can move. The thingamabob is also a loyal companion for those who are lacking in the friends department. Bring your thingamabob to the gym as a motivator. Car trouble? Leave it to thingamabob. Thingamabob can even help you create awkward small talk in the elevator. Who could that be in the bathroom? Thingamabob, you little scamp. So, what are you waiting for? Order your very own thingamabob today for the low, low price of only $299,999.99. Ever feel like the Okay, so that's the uh, goofy uh, video that I created for this, uh, for this commercial here. And I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, introduction to all the projects that I have for this, uh, for this commercial here as well. So all, all the projects here, I believe we're going to be sending out these projects. So you're going to be sending out a file that'll include all these projects to you guys a little bit later on. So if you have any, uh, you know, if you want to deconstruct it on your own time, you can go ahead and feel free to do that and uh, take a look at all the animation and all that stuff that we did. Okay. And if you have any questions, again, you can also email me. My email is uh, kai at reillusion.com. That's K-A-I at reillusion.com. And I accidentally just kind of saved over the script. So I'm gonna give you a brief look at the uh, original script that I have here, okay? And I'll provide a, a better version of this script for you guys. So basically it's just, uh, there's no conversation back and forth. It's just a narrator or an announcer, I guess, kind of uh, announcing the entire thing in case you can kind of read through this script. Um, you can, I'll send it to you guys later so you can review it on your own time if you really want. It's not really very interesting, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you can check that out on your own time anyways. Okay, so let's get to the animating now that we've uh, done a little bit of introduction here. So I'm going to open up the first project here, which is actually on the screen already open right now. Um, I have it saved here as commercial. And if I just go ahead and play this back, uh, you can see here that we have a little, uh, this is the length of our project between these little two orange uh, triangles here. Let's just go ahead. Ever feel like back. the world is just passing you by? Like you keep walking and walking, so but your life like is going nowhere? Animator. Like you're literally trying to walk forward, but the animator of your project won't allow you to change your transform position? Well, luckily, we've got just the thing for you. All right, so very, very simple uh, introductory project. Um, basically we just have one character walking. We have the rain cloud falling on or the rain falling on him, the rain cloud above him. There's a variety of different uh, packs that are included uh, in this uh, project here. So when I actually send all these projects to you guys, you may not, you may experience watermarks on your screen. So just be aware of that. Uh, you may not, if you haven't purchased the, pro, the uh, content pack, then you'll see watermarks, okay? All right, so this is what we're gonna be producing. Let's just go ahead and uh, start from scratch, I guess. Um, this is a pretty easy scene to reproduce. So the scene can actually be found, I believe, in scenes. Um, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Uh, which one is it here? So under, G under scenes here, under uh, the scene folder, there should be one down here. I believe it's down here, uh, the outdoor scene. Okay, so this, this should be embedded with Crazy Talk Animator 3, so everyone should have this scene. Okay, conveniently already put together for all of us. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and hold Alt and both mouse buttons to zoom out. And you can see this is our scene right here. Okay, so what we can actually do is, uh, if you wanna take a look at the scene in 3D view, I wanna introduce something to you right off the bat here. This, uh, you can use this 3D view up here, this little button right here that I'm mousing over and click on that. And once you do that, you can see where every item is on this scene in the 3D plane. If you hold Alt and right click your mouse button, you can rotate to the side like this and you can select items and you can move them forward and back on the blue Z axis, okay? The red axis here is the uh, X axis, the green one is the Y, and the blue is the Z, okay? X, Y, Z, um, yeah, X, Y, Z, R, G, B is how you can remember it, okay? <laughs> kind of lost there for a sec. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna basically recreate that scene from scratch. And I'll show you, it's really simple and really easy to do. Uh, first, we need to bring in our main character. So I'm just going to go to the actor tab here. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time uh, customizing actors in this, uh, in this or webinar, rather. We're going to be kind of customizing the thingamabob a little bit later on. 
Uh, so I'm just going to go up to character G3 humans and find our elastic folk. And the F and the S on the icons here indicate front facing and side facing. We're going to use the side facing one since he's kind of uh, walking sideways here. And just click and drag that in. All right, and just place him in our scene. Now, if you want your character to be uh, facing the other direction, it's pretty simple. All you got to do is just go ahead and use this flip tool up here, horizontal flip. You can flip them back and forth, back and forth, just like this. All right. So um, let's take a look at our uh, script here. We have this uh, kind of introduction. Ever feel like the world is just passing you by? You may have recognized that voice. <laughs> it's pretty easy to distinguish that it's mine. Uh, but here's the script that we're just going to be kind of putting in here. And I already have this saved as a wave file. If you want to learn how to save a wave file recording, I can show you in uh, Audacity a little bit later. But it's pretty simple. OK, so uh, let's have our character here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring in some kind of dummy character to be the announcer, I guess you can say. OK, so what I'm going to do is go over here to G3 Freebone. And I like to use this talking penguin because I think he has the appearance that I imagine our, the narrator would have or the announcer would have. You can just imagine this little uh, midget penguin with the uh, deep announcer voice. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is uh, the first thing I normally do is I normally bring in the audio just to kind of give us uh, um, uh, a reference for the length and the timing and everything like that for our animations, especially in a project like this. So with the penguin, and it doesn't really matter where he is in the scene, we're going to make him invisible later. Uh, but I'm going to go up here to create a script and we're going to use the wave file. Okay, so wave file and this TB1, okay, TB standing for thingamabob, all right? Ever feel like the world is just passing you by? Like you keep walking and walking, but you're- Okay, so we've, our, we've heard all that before. So there's our penguin just kind of announcing to us. And what we're gonna do is make him invisible just by going to frame one, make sure we're at frame one and use this visibility tool up here. All right, boom, penguin's invisible. Now we can focus on our main character. So let's give him some animation really quickly. Go to our animation tab over here. Uh, the template tab up here rather, and motion, and G3 human, uh, elastic folk side. If you go to move, there should be a walk. There's a jump, there's a run, there's a move, a walk, all the basic stuff that you need, okay? So we're just gonna go ahead. You can use the walk 1S to start your walk if you want, or you can just go into a loop. It doesn't really matter. The two stands for the loop, two L, and the three E stands, E stands for end there, okay? And I'll show you the end in just a moment. Let's go ahead and just uh, you know, start. Ever. And then basically when you click that, it's gonna uh, begin walking and then feel like the world. You can click the walk 2L as many times world as you is want. Just or an easier way to loop your walk is just to go and press F3 in your timeline and make sure that you have this little thing selected here, which is object related track. Okay, make sure that's red. So when this is selected, it uh, doesn't matter what you select in your scene, like the building, uh, the traffic light, your timeline track is going to switch to that object. Okay, so I always have this on myself. So if I click on my character, boom, all of his tracks are available just like that. Okay, and the motion clips can, will be saved in the motion track, okay, for your body. So you can see here we have walk 1S, walk 2L, and another walk 2L, okay, right here. Um, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually click this walk 2L, the second one, and uh, delete it. And the reason for that is because he's walking a little bit too fast for my comfort. He's supposed to be walking. Like Ever feel fast. like the world is just, you know, and he seems like he has a little bit too much uh, jump in his step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this clip. And if you want to make your walk a little bit slower, what you can do is you can use this button right here, the speed toggle. Also, you can use Alt S as a hotkey and just click and drag this clip a little bit longer. Okay. And then if you feel like the world is just, you'll see he'll walk a little bit slower, okay? So maybe even uh, uh, 50 frames. Feel, feel, for... feel like the world is just past. Okay, so we have this one walk that's about 50 frames. And basically our character is gonna be walking for most of the time, uh, most of this uh, scene. So we'll go to a uh, loop. We'll toggle back from speed to uh, speed rather to loop. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold Alt and scroll my mouse button because you can zoom out a little bit here. And I'm just gonna basically loop this as many times as I want, I think. When does our penguin stop talking? Got, got just the thing for you. Okay, so about frame 475 is when the penguin stops talking. So if you've gone too far like this, like me, you've <laughs> went a little too far on your uh, looping. If you want to cut it, all you need to do is uh, right click anywhere on your clip and select break. Okay, 
And that's just gonna basically just break it into uh, two separate clips here. I'm gonna take the second one here and just go ahead and delete it. Okay, so we only need him walking for this long. Now, one thing that we need to do uh, while he's walking, um, he's walking with his head upright, okay? He's not, he shouldn't be doing that, he's kind of sad and depressed. So what we wanna do is we wanna go to uh, frame one and uh, make sure that we go to our 2D motion key editor over here, okay? So this is how you can modify your motion clips. Generally, the animation workflow goes, you use your motion clips first, you apply those motion clips, and then you modify them using the 2D motion key editor. Okay, so I'm gonna open up the 2D motion key editor and zoom in on my character. You can see the yellow bones there. We're just gonna take his uh, uh, torso here. So click on the torso and we can rotate it like this. A little bit forward, okay. Take the uh, neck here, we can click over here as well. And we can just click on the head rather, it'll be easier and just Ooh, not that far down, move his head down like that, okay? So that looks uh, sad enough for me, okay? I ever feel like the world is just... So then from this point on, he's just going to be basically walking with his head down like this. I feel like the world is just... Okay, so that's all fine and good. And if you want it to, you know, go back to normal, you can press reset, reset all. We'll talk about that in just a moment here. Okay, so uh, the length of time that we want him to be downtrodden like this is, uh, let's go here. And uh, you can see actually um, the hip uh, T and head T uh, tracks here. Torso and T, that stands for transform, okay? So these tracks will have a keyframe in them. You can see a little, uh, little doodad right there. That's a keyframe. All right, we're not gonna get into too much detail on this stuff because I wanna keep it simple. So, uh, you don't have to worry about that too much for now. Okay, so let's go ahead and play back. Well, luckily, we've got... Okay, so... ...form position. Well, luckily, we... So when the announcer says, well, luckily, that's when we want him to kind of stop walking, okay? So we can actually, in fact, uh, stop our walk at this frame. So let's go ahead and just break that again. And we'll just uh, delete that clip right there. And let's go to the we, frame, we, like one of the last frames here on our clip. And all I'm gonna do now is just apply that walk end, okay? Like this right here. We've got just the... Okay, now the problem here is that, uh, you know, he's basically just stands upright right away. We've okay, because you can see here, it adds uh, keyframes, brand new keyframes. So what we need to do is we need to kind of restore those uh, keyframes from the beginning. So his head comes down here and then gradually, gradually as we move along, it'll start popping up and we don't want that. What we can do is we can actually copy those keyframes from the beginning. So go down here to uh, click on, click and drag here, and just make sure we select those two keyframes for head T and torso T, and then right click and copy. And then we're gonna go to that frame that we, uh, we, we this frame right here, and we're going to paste those, okay? So I'm gonna right click and paste. Okay, so what that we, did we, is that we, we retained that downtrodden look for the duration of all this stuff here. Okay, so like I mentioned, I applied that audio so I have more of, of a reference for timing here for animation. Okay, so let's go ahead and play this back. Luckily, we've got just... We've okay, so luck well, luckily... Okay, so maybe if I want a little, little bit more of a delay uh, between luckily and we've got just the thing for you, what I can do... Let's go ahead and select our penguin. So I'm gonna to go to C Manager here and select the talking penguin. And because we have that object related track selected, it just selects his tracks right here. Okay, we don't have to worry about trying to make him visible again and selecting him. So for the penguin, uh, since we did a facial animation or, or a lip sync animation, uh, his animation can be found in the face section. Okay, and you can see the voice clip right here. There's the audio wavelength and all the keyframes. And we'll talk about more of this stuff in the second part of the webinar next week. Okay, what I'm gonna do is go ahead here. Luckily, 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 and then we can go ahead and break this clip. Okay, we can break the actual audio clip itself and we can click and drag the rest of it further down. Okay, so. We've got just. So luckily, we've got. You can make a delay or you can move it even further. Well, luckily. Head up. We've got just... Okay, so from here to here is basically where I want his head to come up, okay? So from luckily, we've got just the thing for you. 
Okay, so at this frame here, I'm gonna select the character. You can also select him from the scene manager there. And what I'm gonna do is, you know, right here, let's go ahead to our 2D motion key editor one more time. And we'll just go ahead and press reset all. What reset all does is it basically resets all the bone transforms back to the default value in the motion clip. Okay, so it's just the, takes it all the way back to what, whatever was in the motion clip originally. Okay, so from here to here, you'll see he'll stop walking and his head will come up at the same time. Okay, and we have that keyframe for undercut transform. Okay, Zoop, just like that. Luckily, huh? And if we want to be a little bit less slower, we can click and drag that keyframe further and then it won't occur until that point. Okay, so we've got just Okay, so uh, that's basically it for the body animation for this part. Now we need to throw in the facial animation. And that's really easy. Okay, I'm just gonna do a really simple facial animation, kind of cheating using the uh, presets here. Um, but if you want your character to look uh, down in the dumps or a little bit glum, make sure you select it, go over here to face key editor. Um, there's a lot of other ways you can do this and I'll show you a little bit about the uh, face puppet a little bit later on. Excuse me, but for now, uh, when I'm in a kind of a situation like this, I want to have a really quick, you know, expression on the face. I don't want to bother, you know, moving all the things manually together. What I do is I kind of cheat and I go over here to template. And in template, you can choose any expression style like angry, sad or whatever. Okay, you can just double click them and you'll have your character, you know, have whatever expression you want. Okay, so there's a number of different this doesn't really look helpless, but uh, anyways, <laughs> you can kind of just choose whatever expression you want here. Okay, there's some, some surprised and there's uh, angry and all that stuff. Okay, but I'm just gonna go ahead and choose a sad one. Um, maybe something like this. He looks a little bit too sad. Uh, yeah, this one will be fine. I think sad three is probably better actually. And you can also uh, use the expression slider to uh, adjust the level of expression. So you can determine the level of sadness, okay? Just like this. Now keep in mind that this expression is not going to be keyframed. So this is for the entire duration of your project. So you can't, you know, adjust this throughout from frame one to frame 100 or something like that. This is throughout the entire, entire duration of your project. So well, make, maybe look 75% sad, right? Something like that. 74 is fine. Okay. So you're going to be sad from the beginning and Never sad feel the right until the end. Okay. So let's go to that frame where he, you know, starts to pick his head up here. So we can, uh, uh, here, so once he hears luckily, then his expression is going to change. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is do the same thing. And then again, at this keyframe, where we, it doesn't really matter at this keyframe or not, but I'm going to choose this keyframe here to just go ahead and double click that sad three again to apply it one more time. And uh, in 75%, whatever sad or whatever. Okay, and let's go ahead and close down the motion track and open the face track here. All right, and uh, once we apply that sad three, then from here, Lee, Lee. luckily, so here I want him to kind of have a neutral expression when he lifts his face up like that. So we're gonna go to uh, happy and there's a neutral expression right here. So you can see it opens up a facial clip here. Okay, so uh, under facial clip, this is the clip that we created and under that clip you can create various keyframes. So here's the last sad three we applied right here under face. Okay. And then from this keyframe to this keyframe, you can see it gradually becomes happy face. Okay. Luckily, Luckily eh? we've got just the thing for you. We've got just the thing for you. You, you, you. And once we're finished saying that, then we want them to have an even happier expression. So let's just go ahead and uh, double click neutral right here. You can see it extends that clip and creates another keyframe right there, okay? And then maybe a couple frames later, we're going to go from here to a happy one like this. Yeah, okay. And you can maybe tone down those eyebrows a little bit there. Okay, good. So it's just gonna basically be like this. Okay. The thing for you. All right, so good enough. And that's basically it for our main character's animation. So we just did some really quick uh, body and facial animation for our character. Um, so let's go ahead then and uh, check this really quick here. Okay, so uh, we're gonna be uh, just a little 
answered it for Linda. They were going to be sending out the recording for you, this for you guys as well. So uh, probably within 48 hours after the webinar, we're going to be sending out the recording. So apologies if I'm going a little bit too fast for you guys. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and close this down. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we want to just go ahead and, uh, you know, we can throw in those, that animation for the characters in the back too. If you recall, there was like a police officer and a robber kind of running in the background. I'm going to really quickly do that because it's super easy and it's important. It, it introduces an important concept, which is moving from one point to another. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead to my actors tab here. Now those characters can be found in this uh, G3 bonus pack uh, for silhouettes and poses. And you can probably just Google uh, G3 bonus silhouettes and poses on, on Google and it'll pop up for you there. Um, or I can provide the link a little bit later, but I'm just going to bring in this burglar to the side. Okay. Right here. So there's a police officer chasing a burglar. Now what I want to do is at frame one, I want to bring my burglar over here and you can see he's actually in front of my main character. I don't want him to be in front of the main character. So I'm going to go and choose this little uh, thing on the bottom here and click and drag and make sure he's behind my character on the Z axis on the 3D plane. Okay. That's the most important. And then we can bring in our uh, police officer as well. Okay. So they're both side facing characters. Just click and drag him into my scene and make sure he's behind my main character as well. Okay. This guy did import. Okay. So the important part here is we need to make sure that we go to record mode. So camera record mode is right here. Okay. And now we want to move our camera to the position kind of zoomed out. If you recall, we kind of did a slow zoom in on our character from here to here. Okay. So maybe we'll start about here. And at the end of the, um, the dial or the monologue for the announcer, that's when we kind of zoomed in on our character's face. So let's just go ahead and, uh, play back. Uh, well, I'll just kind of skip through it actually. To walk forward, but the animator of your project won't allow you to change your transform position. Well, luckily we've got just the thing for you. Okay. So at this point, maybe a little bit earlier, we can end our zoom. So maybe about here, let's just, uh, zoom in on our character's face here. Just like that. Okay. So this is the end position of our camera. Now, if you want to find your camera animation, you can just press F3 and go into your timeline. And over here, you can select your track list and go to your project. And there's a camera list right here or a camera track rather. And if you hold alt and scroll your mouse button to zoom out, you'll see there is two keyframes. One, two right here. Okay. Now another important thing to notice is that, uh, the, the only thing that's going to be showing in our final render is everything that's within this red, kind of rectangle here. Okay. So this is the, uh, final render area. Okay. Anything outside of this is called the safe area where you can just put whatever you want to bring into your scene at any point. Okay. Now my shape might be a little bit strange. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to render and render video. And you can see here it's set to like 1680 by 1050, which, which is kind of a strange dimension. Uh, so I'm going to change my frame size to 1080p, which I normally use. Okay. And you'll, you'll notice it gets a little bit wider. Okay. And then just go ahead and close it down. So just make sure you're aware of that, um, that you have chosen the right dimension before you have to go back and fix everything. Okay. So I think we're okay right here. That's the beginning position. So now that we've established our simple camera animation, we can just go ahead and, uh, deselect camera record mode, and then it'll go back to our preview camera. And let's just throw some animations onto our, uh, our main characters. So, uh, first of all, we need to make sure that these guys are out of the scene. Yep, they are. Okay. So let's go ahead and just apply a couple animations to our characters. Uh, the same elastic folk side move. Uh, we will just go ahead and use the loop run loop here. Ever feel okay for our burglar. And like we looped before, go to our motion track here and there's our little run, tr uh, clip right there. Make sure that we have that selected. We have loop toggled. Also use Alt L and basically just <laughs> loop it throughout the entire project. And we can do the same thing for the uh, police officer there as well. Let's just uh, have, give him a, a run. Ever feel it. Okay. So basically they're running and for the, they call him Popeye for some reason. It's supposed to be a police officer, but anyways, uh, just again, loop that, uh, run. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, uh, 
as our character, as we're progressing through the scene, we just need to change the transform position of our characters. So here's our burglar. Let's have him maybe start moving at about frame 50. Okay. So with the burglar selected, I'm going to go ahead and just double click in the transform track. And that's going to create a transform keyframe. Frame 300, he'll finish his run on the other side of our character off the screen. Okay. And you can see there's a green line that goes behind him. And what's going to happen is. Uh, Bye. Like you keep walking and walking, but your okay. life is going nowhere. Maybe he's running a little bit slow. And if he's running slow, what you can do is you can take that final keyframe in the transform track and make it earlier, like maybe frame 200 or something like that. Okay, I'm just kind of estimating here, so. I feel like the world is just passing you by. Like you keep walking and walking, okay, so but your life is going nowhere. And we're gonna do the same thing for the police officer, walk. but the police officer is gonna be a little bit further behind. So I'll just select him and double click in the transform track to begin his uh, movement. And then maybe at this frame, we'll have him in relatively the same position as the burglar, okay? So like this. So what's gonna happen is, there you go, that, that is now chasing each other, okay? So it's really that easy and simple to have our character run through the screen, uh, run through the, your scene rather, okay? Pretty simple stuff. So let's go ahead and review really quickly with our camera record mode. So again, everything that's recorded is in this red rectangle here. Let's close down our timeline and press play. Ever feel like the world is just passing you by? Like you keep walking and walking, but your life is going nowhere? Like you're literally trying to walk forward. Okay, so uh, pretty successful. Now the last thing I wanna do is create that uh, cloud on top of our character with the rain. And this is actually from a new content pack that I really like. I really think it's uh, well worth it. Uh, let's go over here to props and under template, we're gonna have a uh, the weather uh, G3 animated props uh, weather maker. Okay, tons of cool stuff in here like dust and air and light and fog, um, lightning and clouds and stuff like that. Okay, weather effects. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into weather components. We'll just throw in a cloud there. Okay, so maybe it's a rain cloud, so it's a little bit darker. Again, at frame one, just click and drag and throw this in there. You make it a little bit higher and make it a little bit larger, just like that. All right, and um, let's throw in some rain there as well. So in the rain folder here, there's a drizzle. All right, we'll just throw the drizzle right here. Now notice that the drizzle, the shape is a little bit weird. Now this is animated, like I mentioned here. Uh, they're all, all animated. If you right click on them, you can go to action menu and you can have like thunder flash for the uh, <laughs> cloud. We don't want to do that right now, okay? Because it will make a lot of sense. Um, but let's go ahead, go to our scene manager here. And you can see under prop, we can select the drizzle. And if we select the drizzle and right click, action menu, we can just select drizzle loop. Ever feel like the world is just passing you by? Okay, now the problem here is that the shape or the size of the drizzle is uh, you know, much too large and it's not focused on our character. So let's just go back to frame one here. Okay, and make sure that we make our drizzle smaller. Okay, just click and drag it and place it right under the cloud here like that. You can kind of stretch it out as well a little bit if you want, okay. Maybe uh, something like this will do, all right. All right, we'll just move it a little bit further back. Oop, we need to make it ahead of our character. Move our uh, cloud a little bit ahead on the uh, z-axis there. Okay, so what's gonna happen is... Ever feel like the world is just passing yeah. you by? Like you keep Rain's walking... our character, but it stops, okay, and that's fine. We can go to drizzle, press F3 into our timeline here, and just go to our motion track, and again, just loop that. So select our clip here and loop it as long as we want. All right, so that's our scene. Now what I generally do here is uh, as soon as your scene is finished, it's always good practice to... Uh, We've got just the thing for you. Hey. Okay, so we also want the drizzle to stop when, uh, when he starts smiling there. So let's again, right click, break the drizzle clip and just delete that, okay? Okay, we've got stop right here, and then uh, we can right click on the drizzle and drizzle end. Okay, so we'll just kind of gradually peter out. There you go, and we'll move that clip a little bit further ahead. Just the thing for you. All right, perfect. Now, uh, right here is when I'm going to just click and drag this little red rect or triangle here to uh, the maybe frame 550 or 540 or whatever it is there. 
And that's going to be the entire length of my project. So then when you render it, if you go to render, render video, um, I normally choose uh, MP4 myself. You can choose whatever format you like. Just go down here and you want to choose range. Okay. And your range will automatically be set to whatever uh, length of your project is. Okay, cool. Okay, that's it for the first scene animation. Okay, now what I want to focus the second part of this webinar on is creating thingamabob, uh, creating a, an actor version of him and also a prop version of him. Okay, and that's going to be used in the second scene. Um, so there's also one more thing that I wanted to mention here as well, and that's the uh, um, transition that I showed you in the uh, first project there. Uh, so the transitions can be found in work tools, I believe. Nope. Uh, uh, this one, animated props, work tools. There you go. And there's a section called transition down here. And uh, the transition I used was just this little uh, green square zero four. So what you want to do here is you want to go ahead and click and drag that into your scene. And it's a little bit large right now. So what I normally do is if I don't want to change my camera position, what I can do is make sure in the scene manager that I have the square zero four transition selected and just go up here and I'm going to lock my ratio for the size and height of my transition and change it to like maybe 20 or something like that. Okay. So now it's like this big and all we need to do is we need to make sure that this kind of green rectangle here fills the entire size of our, uh, of our scene. So the, the red rectangle, okay. Just like this. Okay, now don't worry about the timing or anything like that right now. Uh, once you've got the proper size, just right click it and select remove object animation. Okay, and uh, what you wanna do is right before you get your uh, transition, right before you want it to start, maybe about frame 500 here or something like that, I'm gonna right click an action menu and select square start. Okay, so it's gonna do that and it's gonna kind of just give us a little bit of a transition. So if I go to the motion track right here, the problem is that it's going to be in front of our screen the entire time. So what you want to do is frame one, you want to just go ahead and make it invisible by clicking the visible invisible button up there. Okay. And then, just all this here. And then when your transition starts, when you have that start little clip right there, just go ahead, maybe somewhere in the middle and make it visible. Okay. Um, and you can use the visible track right there to kind of mess, mess around with that. Okay, so it's gonna just be like this. And zoop. All right. And then in, your, in, your, in the second part of your project, you know, if you have a, the uh, second project coming in, which I'm gonna show you in just a minute, you can uh, right click on it again, action menu, and go to end. Okay, and uh, we need to make our uh, length a little bit longer here. Before we do that, let's go ahead and delete that and then right click and action menu end. Okay, and it's gonna go back to whatever else. Okay, so what you wanna do is obviously at this point, when there's a the big green rectangle is covering your work area here, you wanna change whatever you have in the background, okay? So uh, I'm gonna move on to the second project here and uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how you can kind of create uh, thingamabob really quickly, okay? So thingamabob is actually, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and open it rather. Uh, we don't need to save that. Thingamabob here is actually just a spine character, a spine based character. So here's the uh, transition I showed you. And this is the second part. So you can see my project length is from here to here now. And if I just move ahead, you can see. Introducing thingamabob. the Thingamabob. Okay, cool. So uh, two things we need to do here, create Thingamabob real quick and create that title really quick. Okay, so what I'm going to do is show you how to create Thingamabob first. So let's go to new project and content manager and under actor, we're gonna create two versions of thingamabob, the actor version and the prop version really quickly. They're very simple, okay? So I'm gonna to go to G3 spine, all right? And uh, here we have uh, a spine dummy and a spine motion bone, okay? I just normally use a spine dummy, okay? Just double click and add that to your scene, all right? So right now, this is thingamabob. It doesn't look like him right now, but I'll, uh, show you how you can fix that. And for thingamabob, in case you're wondering, I just use the poop emoji uh, for the shape. <laughs> in case you're uh, wondering, you may recognize the, uh, the shape of thingamabob looking something similar to this, okay? 
And uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna go ahead and I just filled it in with green basically. Okay, so what you wanna do here is you have your, your, uh, your bones set up, okay? So what this is is a, is a, a couple of bones put together. And you can use, uh, the reason I'm using this is because you can use some animation templates, which I'll show you later. Okay, so let's go ahead to uh, Composer up here. So Composer is where you can modify and uh, adjust your character. Now, all we wanna do here is we wanna select our character and we wanna go here to Sprite Editor, okay? You can also use the S hotkey. Okay, very simple. And you can see this is basically just a Sprite, okay? Just like this. Now this little uh, white rectangle column thing, whatever it is, okay? So what you wanna do here is you wanna go ahead and use this uh, one right here, this button right here to replace current Sprite. Okay, because we only need one Sprite for our thing with Bob, all right? Replace current Sprite. And you can see here, I have a PNG file. If I just preview it, this is what it is. I just said a, fill, a filled in green poop emoji, okay? So that's thing with Bob. Just double click him and there you go. So here's our uh, thing with Bob. He has a bone structure. Now what I can do here is I can just uh, click and drag to make that uh, thing with Bob sprite a little bit larger or smaller. Um, what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm actually gonna move the bones, okay? Because I tend not to like to move, change the sprite too much, okay? And then once the uh, thing with Bob there is, is all good, we can go over here to the bone editor, all right? And I'm just gonna like move this bone structure a little bit. You can move it to whatever you want. Uh, we'll rotate this one a little bit. And you can, you know, of course, resize the bones as well. It's just like this. If that bone is too large, you can move it over here, okay? So we'll just kind of do that, all right? Nothing too fancy, because we are kind of lacking for a little bit of time here, so I'm just gonna keep it like that. Okay, so uh, officially now, believe it or not, Bob is actually a character, okay? So since it's a character, what we can do now is we can add some, uh, add a face, okay? So go to our content manager here, and what we wanna do is we wanna make sure we add the face to the correct bone, okay? Now this is very important. We don't want to add the face up here because then whenever this top moves, the face is going to kind of go way off of thingamabob. It's going to go like way over here, way over here. So what we want to do is generally use the uh, second or third bone. I think in this case, the uh, second bone might do or the third bone. I don't know. I'll try the third bone and go over here to our content manager under head and under face it's for uh, simplicity's sake, we're going to add in a G3 facial, G3 face right here. Okay, or you can go to G3 facial components. Uh, not face, actually. We need a head. So head here. Basically the same thing as face, except it includes eyes and nose and everything like that. But you can add these one by one, but I'm going to show you a really quick way to do it. Just add them all together like this. All right, I'm going to use the head 01F uh, for front facing. Okay, double click that add it to my middle bone there, okay? Let's stretch it, make it a lot larger, and just kind of place it right there. And uh, from here, all we gotta do really is um, go to our layer manager, and we wanna delete all the stuff we don't need. So the face, we don't need, select it, delete it. Ear, we don't need, select, delete it. Left ear, and back here, we don't need that. And nose, let's just delete that as well. Okay, now uh, that's fine. If you uh, want them to be a little bit larger, like the, the face or the, rather the mouth or the eyes or anything like that, a little bit larger, just go ahead and uh, click them. I'd recommend making your height and width uh, locked uh, right here by clicking that lock and lock ratio. Here we go like uh, 120 or 150 or something like that. Okay, and do the same thing for the eyes, uh, 150. Uh, whatever size you like, it's really up to you. And uh, eyebrows as well, 150 and 150. All right, so there you have it. That's thingamabob. Now you can uh, rotate his eyebrows if you want. To, however you rotate his eyebrows, keep in mind that this is gonna be the default rotation value. Okay, so something like this um, is fine. Okay, so there's thingamabob, pretty cool stuff. Um, so he's already a character. What we can do, let's first go ahead and uh, go back to our stage here. And with the thing about Bob selected, let's go to our uh, content manager here, actor tab, 
custom tab up here and select the character folder and just use this plus key, right? And that way you can save him as a character. So custom, custom thingy guy. Okay, <laughs> I think I have thingamabob saved already. Okay, so um, you wanna animate him, pretty cool, uh, pretty easy to do so. You can select the uh, face puppet tool over here and let's just zoom in and preview a couple things, like maybe select a profile like this. All right, ooh, ah. Okay, so there's thingamabob uh, animated. You can click your mouse button to have him blink. All right, and uh, you can use all sorts of different uh, facial expressions. All right, so now he's fully animatable and you can animate him by going to the animation tab over here and using, um, Make sure you go to G3 spine. Okay, so there's some animations that are made specifically for the G3 spine right here. Um, cool stuff like this uh, jump and roll, okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, double click that. Ooh, so you can see just a little jump like that, pretty cool. The jump and tumble, okay. So the, the reason I use that spine template is because you can just use these really quickly. Okay, it's gonna jump around like this and uh, is rolling and spring. You have him shake like this. Okay. And all sorts of other fun stuff. And we can uh, explore that uh, at another time. All right, but that's thing about Bob. So now you have your character, you have him saved, you can apply him to your scene again at any time. You wanna make him into a prop. What you wanna do is go over here to, uh, back to your uh, um, composer mode here. Now the reason we, we wanna make him into a prop is so we can actually use the, elastic motions on our character. So you can't use elastic motions on, on characters, but you can use them on props. So um, what you can do is you can just select a Bob here and go to uh, launch to external PSD editor, okay? Now you need the pipeline version of Crazy Talk Animator to do that, so keep in mind. And what you wanna do here is, I like to just select head, head and body in one file, and let's use an image scale of one, okay? There's no need to make it larger in this case. And just go ahead and launch, okay? Uh, don't worry about that. It's just gonna convert it from a vector element to an image element. And once he's in uh, Photoshop, it's pretty simple. You wanna get rid of all those yellow bone uh, reference things and stuff. Um, so you can just click right here, um, under here, under head bone, just remove all those, okay? And then that's thing about Bob. Okay, so there's your PNG for your prop. So you can go ahead and file, save as, and save as a uh, transparent PNG. Uh, let's go to our desktop. We'll call it uh, thing um, uh, Bob guy. Okay, and go ahead and save that. There we go. Okay, so now we have it saved as a PNG as well. We don't need to worry about uh, anything else. Okay, so. In scene two, I'm just gonna go ahead and open it up. I'm gonna kind of deconstruct it for you guys. Um, this is a little bit easier from, than starting from scratch here. Okay, so this commercial part two here, uh, let me just click and drag it in. Um, so here we have the transition, like I mentioned here. And this thing about Bob here, this title is another, the last important thing I wanted to mention here as well. Um, Thingamabob here, all I did for Thingamabob's animation, in case you're wondering. A strange looking but life-saving companion that can. Is, he just has those animations that I just showed you and I use the uh, facial puppet tool, okay? So he's just doing a couple of dances and blah, blah, blah. But what I wanna show you here is the Thingamabob uh, title, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually delete that title really quickly off of my scene here. Cause this is the last important thing I wanted to show you. And we're gonna just import it in again. So all I did for the thingamabob title is you can see here, there is a, uh, let's see, logo, which one is it here? I believe it might be this one. All right, hope this is the one. Okay, thingamabob industries. Anyways, basically what I did is I just created text like this and saved it out as a PNG file, okay? So the same thing I just did with Thingamabob, I just did with the text as well. Okay, I ended up with this. This is a PNG file uh, with Thingamabob and just different colors of uh, the of text here, okay? So that's a PNG file. So uh, what you wanna do here is when you bring in those titles, just go ahead and click and drag it in. 
okay? And drag it in as a prop. Make sure you drag it in as a prop, very important. Okay, now if it's a little bit large like that, no problem. Let's just go ahead and make sure that we're out of uh, record mode here. And uh, let's make it a little bit smaller, something like that, back into record mode. There you go. So there is the thing about Bob title. Let's just right click and remove object animation. Now, at this point here, we don't wanna make it visible, um, but what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and play back. Oops, I need to make sure my volume's up here. Yeah. Introducing the... Okay, so the thingamabob, when, it, when the announcer says the thingamabob, that's when we want the thingamabob title to, you know, flap in, okay? Now there's a whole ton of elastic motions we can use here uh, by going to our content manager and elastic motion. Um, when you have a title or a character or, whatever, or a prop or whatever entering into your scene, uh, generally you want to use the entrance elastic motions, okay? Try these ones right here. And you can use all kinds of ones like uh, elastic clip here. There's jump, there's throw in. Um, I, I kind of mentioned in the description, I would use the spongy moves from, uh, this is a separate content pack here. Uh, you don't have to use these. There's lots that come for free with uh, crazy talk animator, including these FFD ones. They come in for free. Uh, the fall one, for example, just double click it. Thingamabob. Okay, so it kind of falls from the sky. If you press F3 and go into your timeline here, uh, this is called name, by the way. You go to your motion track, you can see the clip right here. So it just kind of falls from the sky. Okay. Now, lots of crazy stuff you can do with this. I don't think we have much time to, uh, to show you how to, how to work that. Um, but if you want, you can right click it and you can convert it to an elastic motion itself. And then you can customize it. Okay. Now, I'm not going really to show you at this point how to do that. Uh, but we can, if you have any questions, I can show you a little bit later. It's not too complicated, but uh, yeah, you can just put it in there. And obviously, at this point here, what you want to do is at the very beginning have it invisible. Okay, so same thing with the entrance or the transition, rather, make it invisible. And here, you want to make it visible again. Okay, so okay, and then maybe when you when it's finished saying thing about Bob, uh, here what you can do is you can have it maybe. There's an emphasis FFD clip. So this is when you want to keep it on the screen. You just want to emphasize it. You want to have it, you know, do something cool. Like uh, you can go to G3 Elastic Motions, impressive. And there's like this happy Strange one. Strange looking. Okay, you can see it bounces from side to side or the happy but Life saving companion. Okay, just, just, there's tons of these. Okay, so we don't have time to go through all of them, obviously. Um, but one thing I wanted to mention here as well is you'll notice, especially right here, like this frame right here that, hey, kind of the, you know, um, morphing of this title is not really that good. It's kind of like um, angular in some places. Uh, the reason for this is because this is kind of a rule of thumb. Every time you bring in an object, like a prop that you want to morph, uh, what you want to do uh, without fail is go over here to your prop key editor, okay? And in your prop key editor, you want to make sure you go to deform and in deform, you want to select smooth deformed object. Otherwise, it'll just kind of be really angular. So when you select smooth deformed object, notice it'll smooth things out a lot more. And you can see now that we have a little bit more, you know, like this, okay? Um, if, we, if we don't have that on, it can be a lot more angular and a lot weirder, okay? So make sure you keep that on. looking but a life-saving companion that can <laughs> My voice in slow motion. Okay, anyways. So uh, once the happy jump is done, we can just go ahead and delete this happy jump, right? Strange, the happy linear. Strange the looking, but, but. Uh, then we can do an exit. Okay, so exit. Um, maybe use this spongy moves uh, pack like I mentioned I would. Um, lots of ones here. Jump, turn. But life-saving. Okay, so it just kind of goes but, 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 up like that. Life, 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 and then comes back down. All right. Or if you don't want that one, you can just delete it. And uh, you can experiment with all the other ones as well. Um, which one did I find was pretty cool? Yeah, zoom out is always pretty good. But life saving. Okay, just like that. Okay, so it kind of zooms but, in, but, zooms out like that. Off into the middle of the okay. Now, if you want to modify this in a custom way, like I mentioned, you can right click it and select uh, convert to elastic motion. And when you do that, you have this elastic motion editor that you can you know, mess around with. And you can see but here, life saving, adjust all sorts of uh, values on this. 
um, at any point, uh, but we're not going to uh, worry too much about that because we're basically running short on time here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, end that and we're going to go ahead and go to the Q&A session. Um, the background, by the way, is just a simple background. If you go to your scene over here, uh, background, I believe, uh, rather scene. There's general backgrounds up here. This is the, the only background I have for scene two. If I go in here, you can see it's just this one of these little doodads right here. Okay, Q and A session. Let's get to it. Um, a reminder, quick reminder: do not put your questions in the chat window. Okay, uh, put them in the Q and A uh, window um, so I can answer them and, and check them off as answered and uh, all that stuff. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly check the. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. All right, okay, cool. So not too much in the chat. Okay, awesome. Thanks for sticking with us, guys. So uh, questions, Q&A. Um, first question is from Walter. Is there a way to get a smooth transition of a side-facing character after doing a horizontal flip? Example, turns to stage left, then turns to stage right. Oh, okay, so yeah, the horizontal flip. Um, unfortunately, at this time, there's not really a way to get the smooth transition for that. Uh, you could, there's a couple ways you can kind of cheat it where you can use like a front facing character and have them uh, move like the, the head move uh, to right to the left and stuff like that. Um, unfortunately, when you're doing a horizontal flip, uh, not a smoother way to do that at this time. Um, we are working on, uh, you know, making that improved for uh, crazy talk animator four. Um, but that's uh, still in the next version. So, uh, Unfortunately, the horizontal flip is the way it is right now, but we have some really cool improvements coming down the pipeline. I can uh, definitely let you know about that. Um, so Walter also mentions, I need a flowing superhero cape for a project. Is there one in the content store? Uh, there's definitely a cape in the content store somewhere, Walter. Um, I'm not sure where it is. Uh, there's so much stuff in the content store these days. It's impossible to keep track of it. Um, because I know in our promotional stuff, we have a uh, character flying with a cape, a Superman cape. Now, I forget where that is. It's probably in one of the uh, composer kits, G2. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be in one of these anyways. I don't have time to go through the entire kind of uh, <laughs> library here, but uh, definitely it'll be in one of the composer kits. And I, I know for a fact we do have a cape uh, in one of them. Um, so probably in body or accessory or something like that, uh, you'll probably find it. Yeah, I can't go through the whole thing right now, but uh, lots of other um, stuff in there. Maybe you can email me, uh, kai at reillusion.com, and I can uh, spend some time later trying to find it for you there. Um, uh, Gary asked a good question. Can you use real actors and mix them with this animation? Yeah, you can definitely do that. And we're gonna talk about how to do that in the third part of this webinar, uh, the YouTube focused one. Where we're gonna kinda create our own custom avatar for our YouTube channel and uh, have it talk and uh, address the audience and stuff like that. So, uh, I mean, you can use your real face, like take a picture of your face and put it on your actor and use morph based animation. And again, we'll talk about the difference between sprite animation and morph animation, uh, actually in the next webinar, okay? Um, so, uh, Robert Robertson asks, is there ever a way to incorporate mocap Neutum into animator? Uh, yes, there is, but only at this moment, it's only for a specific type of character, which is a G2 character. Um, so not sure if any of you are aware of this, but, uh, G2 characters are pretty cool in that they can use 3d animations, um, from iClone. So I'm going to show you really quickly here, because this is kind of a, one of the cool things that I like to show. Uh, if you go to actor, you go to G2 or G2 composer kit, whatever, or maybe just use G2 character. All right, so let's just use maybe uh, Saul, okay? So if, they, if their character says G2 on it, that means it's a generation two character from Crazy Talk Animator 2. And you can use your bracket keys to rotate your character like this, okay? Now, the reason we've kind of expanded to include bones and stuff for 2D characters for CTA 3 is because these characters are really tricky to make. They're kind of, well, they take a lot longer to make, okay, uh, than the G3 characters. Um, and in CTA4, we'll probably have a happy hybrid, hybrid 
uh, of these characters. But uh, this is one of my favorite types of characters, G2 characters. I've used them in many projects. You can go to animation and um, you can actually click and drag in your icon animations as well. Uh, where are the icons animations here? Gosh. Um, let me, oh, okay, editable 3D. Okay, under the G3 human basic motions, editable 3D. Okay, so let's just do like a street dance, hip hop, uh, groove, something like this, or routine. Okay, so if I click and drag this routine one onto our character. Okay, so this is the cool thing about G2 characters is you can have them do, they have like 3D animations. So this isn't actually an, a 3D icon animation, okay? And there's ones where you have your character turning around, like maybe uh, uh, the girl style it must have some turning around, I think. Okay, oops. Click into our character there. And hopefully it turns around on this, but uh, obviously the, the arm going through the uh, head thing, you want to fix that. <laughs> but yeah, it's really cool because you can, uh, G2 characters, you can apply these icon animations to them and it calculates where they just kind of, you know, it can be jittery at times, but you can always uh, refine that later on as well. Um, so yeah, so hopefully that uh, answered that question for you there. Okay, I'm just going to go to answer, answer. Um, yeah, so the mo motion capture can be used on G2 characters, possibly G4 characters, although I can't tell you too much about that at this time. Okay, so ba -da -ba -ba, Daniel asks, uh, can you give us an uh, update uh, to mute audio when you're editing motion? Uh, yeah, if you want to mute the audio, um, there's a couple ways you can do that. Let me just... Uh, load in. I, I, I also want to mention as well, if you want to add uh, music to your project, uh, I'm just going to load in commercial one here really quickly again. If you want to mute the audio, um, there's this little kind of speech bubble thing down there. And that represents your, the audio for your our characters talking in this, in the scene. Okay. Ever feel like the world is just so passing you by? Like you keep walking and walking, but you're like- If you want to mute the audio, just take that down, okay? Now I didn't mention uh, music as well here. Um, I did have some sad music uh, in the background of this scene. And I'll show you where I found that. Um, there is a really cool website called Ben Sound. Okay, uh, bensound.com. Really a lot of good free downloads for royalty free music. Obviously you can't use it in a commercial context, but uh, yeah, a lot of really cool stuff. I'd highly recommend checking this stuff out. There's like seven pages of stuff. You can probably find something that you need. I'll put the link in the website or in the chat window there. I uh, just noticed a question from John in the chat window uh, about G2 characters. Uh, no, John, you, you cannot make G2 characters uh, without Flash, unfortunately. So the G2 characters were created uh, using Flash, Adobe Flash. Um, so like I mentioned, they're a little bit trickier than your conventional G3 character to create, uh, unfortunately. Uh, we do have a template we can provide to you uh, that in lots of those tutorials that I made a long time ago on how to create the G2 characters um, if you have the time. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So I want to talk about just inputting the music in your scene. Pretty simple stuff in case you haven't uh, figured it out. Uh, just press F3 to go into your timeline. Make sure you have your project tracks open and there's three music tracks or soundtracks you can use. There's uh, sound effects one, sound effects two and music. All you gotta do is just double click in there and uh, go ahead and load in the sad day music right here. Okay, so there it is, the sad dramatic. Camera, zoom in without the uh, narration. All right. Um, for the actual commercial, I did it in um, uh, Adobe Premiere, okay, because it's a little bit uh, better for as far as volume controls and all that stuff. All right. So there you go. Hope that answers your question there, Daniel. Uh, Lance asks Is there any way to interpolate between two sprites and instead of jumping from one to the next? Um, is there is a button press with an up position? 
Uh, yeah, good question from Lance. So he's mentioning, is there a way to interpolate kind of uh, transition between one sprite to the next, as opposed to just jumping from one sprite to the next? Uh, we do have that, um, you can morph your sprite, okay. Um, I, I kind of briefly opened the, uh, the morph uh, panel, the prop editor, okay. So for example, uh, what you would do is you would go over here with the, the cloud, we'll use the cloud as an example of a sprite, and you would just go into your more or prop key editor, hopefully it opens up there, there we go, and just go to deform, all right? So you would kind of probably just, you know, move the uh, position to whatever you want. Say, for example, your next sprite was something over here. So you can transition that way, okay? Uh, you can do the same thing for your characters. If you select your, uh, we cover this in the next uh, webinar. If you select your character and press the, uh, whoops, uh, F hotkey, let's just focus on in there. If you wanna morph any of the facial features, you can do that by uh, going to the facial key editor and there's the deform or the morph, okay. Uh, I like to use a deform, uh, it gives you a bit more freedom. So select like the nose here, for example. You can deform the nose, stretch it out like that. All right, and uh, deform it that way as well. Okay, and the morph is more like for uh, morph-based characters. All right, so if you do that, okay, it also works on these G3 characters as well. Okay, so you can move it like that way. Um, however, the uh, deform allows you for more kind of deformation of the actual sprites themselves. All right, so you can use a deform, like a, you can deform his eyebrow here. And we have to zoom in really close for the eyebrow, just like this. All right. Um, hope that answers that question for you there. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, we just it's like done. I clean up our Q and A window here. All right, so hopefully that answers your question there, Lance. Uh, if you need further clarification, just feel free to ask again. Uh, David asks, uh, ba -da -ba -ba. yeah, okay, so David mentions a really uh, important thing that I've been asking for for ages, is uh, the search capability in the content manager. And I really hope that's in the next version because as we get more and more content, you know, say for example, I'm in my uh, prop tab right here and I wanna look for something like a hot dog. Well, um, there's no way to search for that. You have to kind of go through all the folders right now, um, which obviously, uh, if, if, you don't, if you're not super familiar with your content manager like I am, I don't use CTA3 all too often as compared with iClone, but uh, you know, you'd have to go through here and I think I was searching for a hot dog like a couple days ago, I still couldn't find it. I don't even know at this point if we have a hot dog in any of our content packs. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so uh, the search uh, capability in the content manager, hopefully it's on the horizon, David. Um, I have mentioned it, and I've, a lot of people have mentioned it to our uh, development team, so hopefully that'll be included. I'm 90% sure at this point it will be, uh, fortunately, so um, there's hope on the horizon. Um, yeah, so Beth mentions the same thing, possibility to have a search button on the template. All right, yeah, definitely high in demand. So I'm pretty sure we'll have that in the next version. Um, Cecil mentioned, should I be seeing the Q&A flow? I don't think uh, attendees can see the Q&A. I think it's just me answering them. Um, uh, attendees can only see in the chat window, not the Q&A. They can ask the questions and I answer them either by text or answer them live. I'm um, pretty sure um, because uh, this is only the second or third time we've been using the Zoom uh, webinar tool, so, um, but I like it so far. Um, so I don't think the, uh, you guys can see the Q&A. I just kind of mentioned it myself here. Okay. So Daniel asks, can we, can we send an iClone motion to G3 character motion? Um, ba -da -ba -ba. I don't believe so. Uh, I don't, you, you cannot apply iClone motions to G3 characters for sure. And yeah, the motions between G2 characters and G3 characters are not compatible, unfortunately. 
Um, so unfortunately, Daniel, we, we cannot uh, apply iClone motions to G3 characters at this time. All right, apologies for that. Um, Lawrence asked, can we use the iClone motions with CTA3? Uh, yeah, I just mentioned only for the G2 characters. Okay, so hopefully you got that. Um, Jimmy asks, can you animate toys as well? Yeah, you can definitely animate toys. You just gotta have a picture of your toy. Can be an animate, can be a, a an actual picture, like a digital picture you took of your toy, or it can be a drawing of the toy. Okay, and you can animate it just like I did with the crappy looking thingamabob. Okay, <laughs> just apply a. Uh, you can also use your own. You can also create your own bone structure as well, but I just use the template for uh, the sake of easiness. All right, hopefully that answers your question there, uh, Jimmy Sanchez. Um, can you replace body parts? Daryl Slayton asks, can you replace body parts on G2 characters in order to make a custom character? Yeah, you definitely can. Um, like I mentioned, the process for creating the custom body parts for G2 characters is a bit more complicated because you have to use Flash uh, as opposed to Photoshop. I think most of us find Photoshop a lot easier than Flash. Um, but if you want to customize your G2 characters, there's also a lot of, um, content packs you can uh, pick up, purchase as well uh, from the content store that allow you for custom G2 characters. Um, just, you know, search maybe G2 uh, character in the content store. You can find a bunch of content packs. Like these ones here, the uh, G2 body composer kit. Okay, these are only the actors. Um, if we go to uh, accessories down here, um, or body, I believe, and G2. I don't think I have the packs actually installed, but there are a bunch of them, okay, for G2 characters. I only have the G3 ones installed, it looks like, but there's two or three, at least, G2 uh, body packs there uh, for you there, uh, Daryl. Uh, again, you can email me later. I, I don't want to like kind of waste people's time just kind of Googling <laughs> on the webinar to search for it myself. So you can email me uh, later and I'll be able to give you a, some solid links there. All right. Okay, so Michael mentions here, uh, the sound of the timeline was overpowering my voice. Um, okay, so apologies for that, guys. Maybe I'll try and uh, get that volume adjusted a little bit uh, next time. Normally my voice is the one that's too loud, but uh, I guess this time it was the other way around. Turn my volume down maybe. All right, uh, thanks for that uh, heads up there, Michael. Um, Daniel asks, is it possible to put more track volume audio inside the program in the next update? Uh, yeah, hopefully that's an, an, a new uh, feature in the next version. Now, I wanna encourage anybody, if you have any uh, feedback or any suggestions you want for the next version, I highly encourage you to uh, email us. I can email developer at reillusion.com, which also goes to me. Uh, but I can forward that to our uh, development team and uh, give them the feedback from our users. And also uh, we, we do scour the forums as well. So if you have any feedback, there's also um, a section in our forum for suggested uh, new features or wishful features, I think it's called. Um, I'd highly recommend putting it in there because we do uh, regularly check that for new features that we, uh, that people are requesting, okay? And keep in mind that this Crazy Talk Animator is only version three right now. So we've only had three versions of this program. So there's tons and tons and tons of stuff that we can improve and that we want to improve. So we do need your feedback um, for, to determine that, you know, how users, how people are using our software and how we can improve it to kind of uh, adapt to your, your animation style and whatnot. Okay. All right, so... Um, a few more questions here, still 11 more questions, looks like. Uh, Mitch Lawrence asks, is there any ease in or ease out capability to smooth certain movements to be more realistic? Uh, yeah, there definitely uh, is ease in and ease out. Uh, Mitch, I'll show you a quick example here on the camera. Okay, so the camera is easy because we only had those two keyframes here. Okay, so if I want to ease in and ease out the camera movement, what I would do is I would go to, uh, click on my second keyframe and right click it and there's a transition curve, okay? And once you select the transition curve, there's a bunch of uh, preset transition curves that you can use here, okay? So there's, you know, smooth here is ease in, ease out, that one right there. Um, there's things like stutter start. Okay, um, it's 
kind of hard to tell because it's uh, such a long. You need to have the keyframes closer together to make a noticeable difference. So let's go make it a little bit closer like that. Something like this. Okay, so start, start and ends, okay? So maybe when they're saying, but wait, we have, we've got something for you, you can use this stuttering start and end, or end in a bounce, okay? So these are like transitions, and there's decelerate, okay? And uh, you can adjust the strength as well for a lot of those. Okay, um, same thing goes for any prop, any character, any movement. All right, so hopefully that answers your question there, uh, Mitch. It's not really comprehensive, uh, obviously. It's only using those uh, 12 or so templates, but at least there is something for easing these out. Um, okay, so hopefully that's answered that question there. Okay, so Robert mentions the Zoom frame rate is better than the other app. Good, good to know, okay? Because <laughs> I like Zoom as well. I like Zoom because we can do things like this. I can like uh, draw a little smiley face. I want to annotate anything. So if you guys want me to point out anything on the screen, I can just, you know, draw whatever with my crappy flower. All right. <laughs> okay. Distraction here. Okay. Anyways, Shane asks here: Will there be future tutorials from Illusion using the Weather Components Pack? Um. Yeah. Possibly. I mean, if you have any tutorial requests, I'm the guy that normally does it. Although I don't do too many Crazy Talk Animator 3 tutorials anymore. Um, but definitely email me about that and uh, we can put it into our, uh, into our lineup of, of tutorials waiting to be produced. And we'll get to it at some point, um, probably within a month or so, I believe, I think is our, our wait list right now for tutorials. Because we do get lots of um, recommendations and uh, requests for tutorials. So uh, e email me or you can also just you know, put them in the forum as well. Uh, and we'll respond to those uh, as soon as we as soon as we get a chance. Yeah, the weather components pack is pretty cool. You can do a lot of cool stuff with it. So uh, I look forward to uh, doing tutorials on that in the future, but uh, not in the pipeline at the moment, Gene. So maybe just uh, email us to remind us, uh, and I'll get those done for you. Um, so Joe mentions, will iClone be available for Mac users? Uh, we get <laughs> we get this uh, question asked almost inevitably every webinar. Um, we don't have any current plans to offer iClone for the Mac, okay? So unfortunately for Mac users, um, but we do have a lot of Mac users using like emulators right now to uh, just to run iClone like that. And it seems to be working fine for a lot of them. So actually some of our major uh, developers are Mac users, excuse me. And uh, they, yeah, use <laughs> um, the, the uh, Mac emulators to run iClone, so. Um, unfortunately, I can't comment on that at this time, is my official response. Um, okay, so we'll answer that question there. Okay, so we do have some um, issues with the audio at, at times here. Um, ba, 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 ba. Okay, so Daniel asks, um, I can input in body puppet uh, animation. Oh, so Daniel's here is asking about uh, body puppet animation uh, using the masking uh, function. Um, oops, let me just clear all this crap here first. There we go. Uh, for the body puppet, um, I haven't used the body puppet in ages for uh, for Crazy Talk Animator. Let me just see here. I'll make sure our character is selected here. Um, I don't think for the G3 characters we have that option. Uh, I think it's only available for previous uh, characters because um, you can see the body puppet here. Unfortunately, we don't have that masking available for these characters. Um, so I, I would say no at this point. I never actually realized that. Uh, I'm not sure why, but uh, maybe it's only for uh, front facing characters. Can't see why we wouldn't have that. But, uh, let's turn, take a quick test here. Oh, looks like the uh, body puppet is not available for the uh, G3 characters at this time. Never even noticed that. Probably improve that in the future. G2 characters looks like it's okay. Body puppet right there. But not for the G3 characters because they use the bone structure. All right. Yeah, so here you can do all the masking and stuff just fine. All right. Um, so apologies for that, Daniel. 
Um, sometimes you got to sacrifice one thing for the other, but hopefully in the newer versions, we'll get them all um, kind of harmonized together. Uh, so Lance Bradstreet asks, what do you use for a voice over mic? Do you have to filter out noise and audacity? Um, I'll kind of show you the, <laughs> the quick procedure. Uh, uh, it's really simple and easy to do in audacity. You can see I'm still using Windows 8 like a, like a rube. Um, but uh, yes, what I do is I record, I'm using a Shure microphone. So you just select the microphone from here, uh, whatever microphone you're using. I go like, hey everyone, uh, I'm doing a webinar, blah, 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 blah. I probably should have turned the volume up. But you go like, hey everyone, uh, I'm doing a webinar, blah, blah, blah. And that's the audio. So what you want to do for sure is just go to effects and normalize. Because normalize will give you like regular good levels. Okay, like that. And then you can see this. You guys can probably hear that white noise there. <laughs> just select that, go to effect and noise removal, get noise profile and control A to select everything, go to effect and noise removal and press okay. You go like, hey everyone, uh, I'm doing a webinar, blah, 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 blah. That normally does the trick, all right? <laughs> Quick two second answer there for you. All right. Um, So Linda mentions, I have a high res monitor. As a result, the text for menus and menu options are really tiny. Is there any way to make the text bigger? I believe we're offering that option in the next update, uh, Linda. So um, I can't really comment on it right now with, the, with this current version. I don't believe so. Um, but I know we definitely have that for iPhone, maybe not for Crazy Talk Animator yet. Crazy Talk Animator is normally like a, gen a generation behind iPhone for a lot of the features, but we're trying to kind of catch them up really soon. So any, any feature that you see in, in iPhone, it's probably a good good guess that we're going to have that later on, uh, that feature later on in, in Crazy Talk Animator as well. All right, so apologies, I can't, mention, uh, I can't answer that right now, Linda. Um, there's a couple of people putting in, in the, uh, the chat window there as well. Um, just a reminder that, uh, um, any questions going to Q and A uh, window? I guess yeah. Some people have uh, recognized that. Uh, okay, yeah. Lawrence mentions the timeline and content manager was simpler for preview. Uh, yeah, um, definitely mention that. Uh, send us an email with feedback or the forums as well, like I mentioned. Easiest way to uh, to get our attention for that. Um, Okay, so Patrick Baker asks, uh, I have purchased a range of resources, but find it difficult to know what I have as promos are a bit confusing. Is there any way of getting a full list of resources uh, and what each contains? I know that our, our sales department um, has lists like that, um, Patrick. So what I would mention, what I'd probably recommend doing is emailing uh, sales at reillusion.com, uh, sales at reillusion.com, and uh, they can probably give you a bit of a, bit more of information on what is included in what pack and you know what kind of promo deals you can get with which pack and stuff like that because they deal with that kind of stuff all the time all right all right so Daniel mentions uh, is it possible to have several cameras on at once and then switch them uh, currently not uh, not an option uh, Daniel unfortunately but we hope to have that available in a future version all right, I'm just gonna go through the last couple answers here real quick because we're super over time. Um, ba, 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 ba. Yeah, there's only one camera for uh, Don de Corcel. Uh, you asked that as well. Um, yeah, so basically, you know, just to get around, there's a workaround obviously for using the single camera is to just separate things into separate projects like I do. Um, that's really the easiest way. So for me, each project kind of represents one camera view and that's just kind of the way that I run it myself. Um, like I mentioned, my, my, my project here is, is, uh, nine different projects or the commercial is nine different projects there. Um, so unfortunately that's the limitation at the moment. All right. So we answered the question about the, uh, body puppet tool for, uh, Daniel Cortez there. Uh, anonymous attendee asks, will this Q&A also be available via link after the webinar? Uh, the Q&A will be part of the recording. 
Um, so it'll be available in the link. Yeah. So we, we include the, the Q and a session as part of the recording, right? So you can review that on your own time. If you want to hear me uh, blab on all these, all these answers again, uh, anonymous attendee. All right. So yeah, apologies to Linda for the, uh, the screen resolution issue there. Um, I can't even imagine there's something like in here. No. Um, where was I? Oops. Yeah. I don't think there's anything here for, uh, the text size of the uh, UI. Oh, here you go. Uh, Linda, I believe that asked that question here. 4K resolution, you can enlarge font and UI. This is in your preferences here. Glad I checked that. <laughs> I, did, I didn't realize that we have this. So you have the option to enlarge font and UI for, uh, for Linda there. So uh, maybe select that and uh, hopefully that works for you there. All right. And some people are mentioning the volume is kind of fluctuating. So apologies for, for that. I'm trying to talk as close as I can to the microphone so you guys can all hear me. Uh, but we do have audio fluctuating issues at some points as well. All right, John mentions, love CTA3. We love you too, John. Thanks for that. <laughs> um, so hopefully you're enjoying all the tutorials that I um, painstakingly prepared for all you guys. Um, Chris mentions here uh, about the Patrick's question about the special promos. Yeah, the promos can be confusing at times. You know, I can totally relate to that, guys. That's not really my department. Um, like I mentioned, it's kind of sales sales stuff. So just email them, sales at reillusion.com. Um, for the promo, all the promo stuff. Yeah, so Robert mentions here, We I was asked earlier about uh, different cameras. So what he says is a workaround is to record the same project multiple times with different camera adjustments and edit the parts together with a video editing program, which is what I do in uh, Premiere myself. So uh, thanks for that feedback there, uh, Robert. All right, uh, yeah, so Linda, hopefully, hopefully you found that uh, preferences, um, the enlarged font and UI. Hopefully that'll solve the uh, problem there with your resolution. And I think we are about done. Uh, there's a couple things in the chat window here. All right. All right, so yeah, a couple of uh, people were mentioning the audio was a little bit up and down. Apologies for that. Um, not, can't uh, really solve that from uh, my end at this point. Um, but yeah, okay, so I think that about uh, clears up all the questions. Um, we're gonna end off the webinar then, guys. Uh, sorry for going over time there. Um, but I really appreciate everyone for attending and uh, hopefully you guys learned a lot. I know I went a little bit fast for a lot of you there, but um, just wanted to kind of show you how quick and easy it is to at least create two scenes of, of the project that I created. I think the whole thing, if I don't have to explain it, uh, I can probably do it in like three hours or something, that entire project. So yeah, I highly encourage you to uh, check out that animation uh, competition. Um, take your, enter in your chance for, uh, for getting the uh, $2,000 grand prize and a bunch of other prizes. I'm not even sure what they are, but uh, again, again uh, we're also gonna be sending out a uh, survey for you guys at the end of this webinar. And if you fill out that survey for us, you'll get a 10% discount for the content store. So make sure you uh, check that out. And um, yeah, I think that's about it. Again, it's being recorded. So uh, no worries if you missed something, you can review it on your own time. All right, so uh, I will uh, say good evening, good morning, good uh, afternoon to wherever you are, to you wherever you are in the world. Uh, get out and enjoy the, uh, the nice weather. At least it's nice over here on the West Coast. Um, but yeah, um, we'll go ahead and end off the webinar. So I'll see you guys in the next one, hopefully next week.